this is a video to answer the optimization question about the cables. So essentially what we have are three cities at three different points. And what we're trying to do is to run a cable in kind of a Y-shaped um, configuration between the three cities. So before I go, I've, I've taken a screenshot of what the kind of the general diagram looks like, but let me show you in a more dynamic way what that looks like. So there we go. All right, so we have Centerville at 11 comma zero, Springfield at zero comma two, Shelbyville at zero comma negative two, and then some branching point, right, on the x-axis where the kind of straight cable from Centerville, this purple line, uh, branches off into the green and red lines. Now, notice that essentially the problem is saying, hey, we can put this branching point anywhere. Right? We can put this branching point anywhere on this x-axis so that it makes this kind of y-shaped um, configuration. And But what we want is the total distance of all three of these components, the purple, red, and green components, to be the minimum distance possible because, you know, you always want to save money. Um, now, notice... I mean, if you did this graph, theoretically, you could move this, you know, like further and further away past that middle axis, but then it wouldn't make a Y-shaped configuration and obviously it would cost more money. So that doesn't make sense. So one of the things that we already know is that X has to be positive. So keep that in mind as we go on. All right, so let's go back to, all right. Um, okay, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is to find the equation that represents the total distance of the cable from Centerville to the two final locations. Um, and the problem, guys, you really nicely says to solve this problem, we need to minimize the following function of x. Well, how do we get that equation? Well, we're going to break the problem down into smaller parts. Now, I just showed you what that, um, right, the general diagram looks like. And so we're going to break the first part that's the easiest to figure out is just what's the distance from the breaking point uh, or the branching point, I'm sorry, to Centerville. And that, this is when x equals some value, x, and then this is when x equals 11. So the distance between these two points is just 11 minus x. Now, to find the distance from the branching point, again, we're just bringing the problem down into smaller parts, but to find the distance from the branching point to Springfield, uh, which is this distance right over here, we're going to substitute these two values, 0, 2, and x, 0, into our distance formula. So uh, once you substitute that in, we get square root of x squared plus 4. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to substitute, um, when we want to find the distance to Shelbyville, we will um, substitute 0 comma negative 2, which I've just drawn over, right? And then uh, x comma 0 again. And very nicely, we got the same distance, square root of x squared plus 4. So our total distance is 11 minus x which is, um, right, which is this bar right here, 11 minus x. And then, and you can put parentheses around that if you would like, just to differentiate it. 11 minus x plus 2 times square root of x squared plus 4. Now, because the question does ask you to write it in function notation, we're going to do that as well. So our final kind of expression is f of x equals 11 minus x plus 2 times x squared plus 4. All right. Now, once we've gotten that, and that's really, I think, kind of the key to the problem. Because once you do that, um, you can use a lot of tools to solve it in different ways. But if you can't get that correct first equation, you're going to have a hard time. So, but we've got it. So um, step two, we're going to take the derivative of f of x so that we can find the critical numbers. In this case, so that we can find the minimum value. Remember that the critical values can be found when the first derivative equals zero. This is the equation that we just found. And what I've done is I've rewritten it so that instead of a square root, I've rewritten it with a um, power to the one half. I've always find like making it into the power notation makes it a lot easier to take the derivative. So I'm going to do that and then uh, just take the derivative. And remember that the derivative of 11 is just zero. So that's why you don't see it here. 11 of negative x is just 1, uh, negative 1, I'm sorry. And then um, I've kind of 
written out the chain rule for you in case um, you forget what the different components are. But essentially at the end, you'll end up with these two expressions. Now these two expressions are both the same. We are going to use this very final one um, in this slide. And then you'll notice we're going to use this form when we um, want to take the second derivative later. Okay, so I'm going to come back to this one a little bit later. But for now, we're going to use the fact that the first derivative equals negative 1 plus 2x over square root of x squared plus 4. Right? So we've got that. Now we're going to set that equation equal to 0. Yes, okay. Um, okay, so you can see that I solved it. Um, once I get here to kind of get rid of that squared, Remember, you can always pause the video if you want to take a kind of a closer look at the equations. I'm going to take square both sides. And what I get at the end is that x equals plus or minus 2 at root 3 over 3. From here to here, okay, you do want to make sure you have your plus minus. Even if, as we mentioned earlier, we know that x has to be the positive answer, always, always really good work to just show that you know it has to be plus or minus when you take the square root of um, an equation where you have x squared equals something. But again, uh, as we talked about earlier, x does have to be a positive value because otherwise you're not going to get a y-shaped configuration. All right, so we know x equals positive 2 root 3 over 3. Um, so to kind of fit it into the question they ask, we find that f of x has a critical value at x equals 2 root 3 over 3. Right, so again, what that's saying is that this point right here, x comma 0, is at 2 root 3 over 3 comma 0. Whoop. All right. Now, there are different ways to check this answer, but the problem asks you to do it with a second derivative, so we'll do that. Um, if a critical value is a minimum value of the function, basically what that means is that the second derivative has to be positive. Now you'll notice I've used the form of the first derivative where the root, right, is not written as like, it's it's not like a in the denominator with the square root. I've used the form where it's in a power form because uh, I find that it makes it easier to take the derivative. Now, one thing about this that you do need to be careful of is that this right here now is a 2x times x squared plus 4 to the power of negative 1 half. That makes it a little bit trickier because we do have to use the product rule, which I've listed here. Right? So take the second derivative. You'll get this final expression. And then to see if our answer is correct, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute 2 root 3 over 3. Uh, that gives us 0 0.77, which is positive. So that's how we know that this is, in fact, this critical value, in fact, is a minimum value. One thing that uh, students often forget is they're like, okay, I've done all this work, I'm done. And they forget to answer the actual question. And the actual question was, what is the minimum distance of the cable that needs to be uh, laid out? So we're going to um, do that by substituting that value that we just found into our equation for the distance from step one. So again, here's our green equation back again. And then we're going to substitute 2 at root 3 over 3. And then what we'll find is that um, that distance is 14.464. Now, what, one thing, I, unless I missed it, there's no units in this problem. So it's like 14.464 could be inches. It's not inches because uh, it's between cities. But it could be miles, kilometers. I'm not really sure, um, but it's 14.464 and some kind of units. Now, I did talk a couple of times about different ways to check the answer. I also said that once you have this equation, the key, uh, you can actually get the numerical values for everything else without doing all this. So I'm going to show you a way to use decimals to just check your answer, um, especially if you're doing this at home and you're like, but how do I, how do I know I'm on the right step? Well, here we go. All right. So um, 
essentially what we can do is we can graph that equation for our distance, uh, the equation for the total distance to find the minimum value. So you'll notice I've already kind of set it up for us. So we have f of x equals 11 minus x plus 2 square root of x squared plus 4. That's that green equation, right? That's the equation we found um, with the uh, for the total distance. And decimals is really nice because it actually will find all, it'll mark the critical values for you. So if you kind of click on the minimum value, it tells you that happens at 1.155 comma 14.464. 1.155 is in fact two root three over three. So that's saying that the minimum value happens when X equals 1.155 and the minimum kind of total distance is 14.464. Another thing you can do to kind of uh, use decimals is you can even graph the graph, I don't know why I have graphs here, but graph of the first derivative to help you check that you found the correct critical points. So here's the original graph and I can actually do y equals f prime of x and Desmos will graph that for you. And once again, you can find the critical value. Remember that what we did was we said f, f prime of x equals zero. That's the equation that we saw for. We get 1.155. Uh, shouldn't be a surprise that that's the same x value, right? That's the same point where the minimum happens in the original graph. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful. Uh, please feel free to reach out to schedule more tutoring lessons.